Good evening, Kingdom of YouTube. Air of Carthage here. What the crap is going on? Going to bring you a couple of uh, Shogun 2 Total War online battles. The first one is on the Daisetsu's on Basin here. And of course, I'm going to start out like I did last time. I'm going to record the two builds, and then I will uh, come back from the beginning of the battle so that I'm not trying to talk about the army builds while the battle is getting started. So I will uh, do my opponent's build first. So Alright, my opponent's build consists of three Nagi attendants up front with a Matchlock Ashigaru, and it looks like two Katana Samurai, neither one are veterans. His avatar right now looks like a leader avatar. Uh, he was a silver seven, six or seven, something like that. His cavalry, I think, is almost, um, well, it's almost even on both sides. He's got a Great Guard here, Yari Cav level eight. And then right here, he's got a Nagi Monk Cav level three. Other side, he's got a uh, Great Guard, and then he's got a couple more units that are hidden right here in the woods, a Light Cav, and another Yari Cav, I believe. So let's go back to the beginning, and I will get you my build. Let's check out his avatar. Yeah, so his avatar is level seven silver. So let's go back and take a look at my build. All right, here we are with my build. I've got, um, I believe it's two Light Cav. I've got two Naginata Warrior Monk Cav with no chevrons, and um, obviously I've got one, or no, is it three? Yeah, three Light Cav, two Nagi Monk Cav that are vanilla, two uh, Nagi Attendants. I have a beat-up Portuguese Terzos with about 60 men, um, a one chevron Matchlock Ashigar, which is reload, and then I've got um, a Long Yari and a Bulletproof Samurai, and then in the woods hidden over here, I have a interesting surprise for my opponent. I have my Waka Raiders hidden also with my Hanzo's Shadow, which is the hero ninja unit. You can see it's got some pretty ridiculous stats. So that is my build. Um, of course, I've got my second avatar, which is Patchy, the somewhat bow general here. You can see that he's uh, he's actually level 4, I believe. I could be wrong. I don't know if it shows it screwed up on here or not. But in any case, uh, let's get back to the beginning of the video. I want to explain the tactics and then give you a rundown of what happens here. I do kind of like this white and gold mon that I have going on with this one. It's pretty neat. I'll have to color some of my veterans for some fun here. All right, so the map Daisetsu's on Basin, and I'm not sure if it records my cursor on the screen. I'm deploying in the yellow. My opponent's deploying in the red. Um, this map affords you a couple of things. Number one, you can see all these little spots right here are choke points. Uh, right here, right here. In between those uh, rocky outcrops, there's choke points to get back up to the high ground, which means that using cavalry on this map is difficult unless you have a good plan for doing so. This map is also ideal for an ambush, so this is the forest. Um, it's right here on the right hand towards my opponent's deployment between those two rocky nooks, those woods. That's where I'm going to deploy my uh, Hanzo Shadows, my Walker Raiders. If he attacks me with Cav from there, he's not going to have a good angle to charge, so it's an ideal location to place an ambush. I built my army specific for this map. Um, when I saw that it was Daisetsu's on Basin, I started to set that up. And so from the outset, you can indeed see those two units hidden in these woods. The woods are going to give them extra cover to help them from being spotted by his Light Cav or General, both of which have excellent spotting range. Here's those choke points I was talking about. As you can see, Cav is going to be highly ineffective, even against uh, sword units or something charging up that kind of incline. So my overall strategy, and I'll zoom up from above real quick, is to rush forward. You can see my movement orders here. I'm going to get my Cav up to disrupt my opponent. And I want to wait till he's about right here so that I can then hit him from the flank with my two uh, infantry units that are any good. All the while I'm hoping that his cavalry is going to do exactly what he's doing. So if he really wanted to undo my plan, his cavalry needs to be down here where it can stop these two sword units. But it's not. He's moving down the flanks with it. And that's exactly what I wanted. A lot of players do that on this map and it is a mistake to get your cavalry down there unless you have some very specific reason to do so. Uh, because then it gets them out of position. So I can now easily guard these areas with just one unit of spears on both sides. Makes it very hard for my opponent to get around. I'm running my Nagi attendants all the way forward, and I backed my army up, backed my cav up to tempt my opponent to do this. And you can see, um, I think, here in just a moment, yep, I just used the hidden thing on my Hanzo shadows, and I clicked an attack order, and they'll stay hidden while running. They're moving forward, and I'm also going to move my uh, Waka Raiders forward. So again, Nagi attendants to disrupt, my cavalry is nearby, um, I should have already repositioned my matchlocks here and here, I haven't, but I will start working on it. So you can see that his army is going to be held up here while I get him from the flank with my uh, two sword units, so my opponent has fallen for this hook, line, and sinker. I've got my bulletproof samurai over here, which means his cav has to take the long way around, my matchlock will probably get a few shots, 
Over here, I'm going to put my long Yuri Ashigaru down this uh, same hole there. They're about to move. I'm trying to micro a whole bunch of different units right now. Check this out. I see an opportunity to hit his swords right up the center here. Boom. This Katana Samurai get hit from the front, and then they get hit from behind with my two uh, ninja units. And then uh, right here, you can see me easily bottlenecking. My opponent's going to be trying to micro the infantry fight and his cavalry, which means that he's more likely to make a mistake, which he already has. Here you can see my bullet poof samurai is going to start eating up this great guard, which will end up being very cost ineffective for my opponent. My long yari over here, both of these units extremely good at taking down cavalry. And you can see that I just push my cav right through the center to quickly break my opponent's swords. So uh, now he has uh, his main infantry body is broken. And um, I'm in pretty good shape, except for I'm mismicroing some of my matchlock units here. They're going to get slammed by a light cav. Fortunately, it's a Portuguese Tersos, and that cav was charging uphill. So my Tersos will actually start to turn that fight around. Um, so I got very lucky there. My matchlock samurai was, or uh, Ashigari wasn't so lucky, it's running away. I took out a great guard right here with my bulletproof samurai, and then held up these units with a, uh, a Yari cav. It's kind of a waste, but I'm going to hit him from behind here too. Those are just Nagi attendants. They're going to be fairly easy to knock out. I got his matchlocks. Look how quick my uh, uh, Waka Raiders and Hanzo's shadows mopped up the enemy uh, melee infantry. So at this point, my opponent is basically just left with cavalry, and I can get his cavalry wrapped up with my Nagi attendants, my own cavalry, and my swords. And otherwise, these would be great um, cavalry units. Very tough, but they're not going to do well in this type of fight, charging uphill into uh, all kinds of different infantry. My matchlocks came back from routing, so I'm getting shots. Uh, my bulletproof samurai have pretty bad positioning here, but again, just against Nagi attendants. Here comes one of my Naginata warrior monk cav. I decide to turn it around and hit this melee blob. I want to hurry and take out these cav units. And then look, my long Yari Ashigaru is still effectively blocking up this choke point. Extremely hard for my opponent to get around it. I saw my opponent's general running around, so I turned around, clicked an attack order on my Portuguese Terso, so you can see them reloading here. These guys reload quickly. And I'm going to start taking some shots into the enemy general. He's going to react and charge, but again, Portuguese Tersos um, have a lot higher melee and armor, so they're pretty resistant to cav charges under certain circumstances. And at this point, uh, my opponent's cavalry is starting to falter. Um, so basically, when I came into this battle, I had a plan. I knew the map, and I was going to plan an army for it. It's a very risky army, and you can see that I made several micro mistakes. How did I survive these micro mistakes? Well, I survived them by uh, making sure that my opponent was more disorganized than me. So even though I was disorganized, um, he was more disorganized than me. I, the surprise throws them off guard, and they're not quite sure how to react. I could have orchestrated that slightly better. I think I should have started advancing out of the woods just a little bit sooner. But that, that nuggy, that cav push, I pushed right through the center and through my opponent's infantry. And then my opponent was having to try and rush his cav through my spears to react which means that it was basically too late. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the um, statistics from this. I love this type of gameplay. So my opponent um, actually had a, a semi-decent army there, really. It would have been a very dangerous army on open ground because he had so much cav power. Um, but when you're going to bring that much cav power, make sure that you have a way to use it. You know, had that been on rice fields or something else like that where he could really maneuver, um, I would have been in big trouble uh, because there would have been very little I could do to answer him um, as a lot of my infantry would have been very vulnerable. But of course I wouldn't have brought the same army I did on Rice Field. So I think that's why it's important to understand the map you're playing on. And the next battle illustrates that too. I have a second one for you to show you that I'm hoping you guys will like. So again, my micro there, I was, I was definitely slow and I made some mistakes, but at the same time I put together a plan that allowed for me to make those mistakes. and. And slowly, I'm trying to improve my, uh, my micro on these games, and it's, it's slightly getting better. You can see the statistics here. This is that Nagi Monk cav that went through those swords. Got a lot of kills. My Bulletproof Samurai hosed a couple of cav units and some Nagi attendants. Look at the Walker Raiders here. Um, those Katana Samurai they went up against were fairly tough, um, so they did take quite a few losses. My um, Another Nagi Warrior Monk cav doing really good, 94 kills. Hanzo Shadows, not all that great for a unit that cost 800, 1,800 Koku, but it wasn't in the fight for very long, and getting 81 kills wasn't bad. Long Yari, very cost-effective. Uh, Portuguese Terso, so look at that, 63 kills, even though they took two cav charges. Um, so again, 
that choke point with the uphill charge, even if you're charging into a weak unit like matchlocks, it's going to greatly nerf that cab charge because of the uphill factor. And then with the armor and the melee attack, you saw these guys just sit there and slay that light cab, and that wasn't even a full unit of Tersos either. Nagi attendants, um, right here, this surprised me. They got a lot of kills for a unit that was just a meat shield. Let's see, matchlock Ashigaru... 31 kills, considering that I completely mis mismicroed them, that was probably pretty fortunate. My Yari Cav was, had to be wasted to hold up an enemy spear unit, so I'm surprised they got that many kills. Um, yeah, Light Cav again, just holding up Cav units. And Patchy's Avatar only got 7 kills. He's So a bow Avatar is really not any good in those type of quick fights, but um, you don't necessarily have to have a leader Avatar to pull off a rush if you pick the right units. Obviously a leader Avatar is probably the best one for it, or a melee Avatar actually would probably be even better. Um, but anyway, there's my opponent's troops here. You see none of his... Uh, look at the his units that got the most kills were Nagi attendants. It's probably because they caught some of my cav. So, but you can see his infantry completely ineffective. Only 50 some odd kills between the two katana samurai. Great guard with only 32 kills. This great guard with only 10 kills. So uh, catching your opponent off guard is definitely a way to go. Know the map, know which armies to pick, and it can definitely benefit.